So I finally did it, built my first PC. It's right here, right behind me, and I, I am a total noob. And over the course of the two days that I was building this thing, I learned so much. And so I wanted to share some of that, some of the things that I wish I knew before I started that might help you if you're just jumping into your first PC build. So if you're wondering, hey, what specs and what parts have you built into your PC? I have a list down below in the description if you want to check that out. I also made a video for members uh, to just kind of describe everything that I did and, and why I chose the parts that I did when I was putting this together. If there's enough interest in the comments, I might also make that video public as well. Cool? Let's get on to the tips. Google is your friend. The good news is a lot of people have built PCs and a lot of people have stubbed their toes on the same problems that I had and the same problems that you are going to have. I watched a lot of YouTube videos to get up to speed on how to do this. And there was one thing that I noticed is that there's many, many things that pros don't tell you in their PC building videos, not because they don't want to, or they're trying to keep some information top secret. It's just that their level of knowledge of things is so high that there's a lot of basic things that a noob doesn't know that they don't even think is worth mentioning, or they forget to mention because it's just second nature to them. For example, fan positioning. Which direction do they go in? Which way do I have to position it to pull air in versus push air out? The particular brand of fan I got, I like read through the little manual thing six times to find that. I never did. I just kind of had to trial and error it or like zoom in on somebody's video so I could see like which way did he position the fans. Number two is keep everything organized. Everything is going to come in its own box. Everything is going to have more screws and cords and connectors than you need. Everything is going to have its own instructions and pamphlets, and some of them don't look like they're going to be useful to you until you absolutely need them. So it's good to keep all the parts and all the things that come with, say, your motherboard in one area and all the parts and the screws and the instructions for your power supply in another box, in another area. Just keep all that stuff separate. I made a huge mistake when I was building and everything got mixed up and it was chaos. By the time I got to the fan installs, I kind of caught on and kept those things separate. But yeah, uh, I, I made a lot of mistakes there. Number three, I would say find a YouTuber who is using your motherboard for the install. That was the other thing I found is there's so many YouTube videos where people are actually building out these things that it was easy to find people who are using my specific motherboard. Some people were doing faster videos and you could just see them, you know, like building it out quickly without a lot of commentary. Other people were using my motherboard and doing like two hour live streams of them building on that motherboard, that was even more helpful. So this is an area where if you haven't picked out your motherboard yet and you're trying to decide between two or three different ones, maybe go to YouTube and see who has the best build video and choose your motherboard based on that instead because it's just gonna save you a ton of time and a ton of headache. I followed along with a channel called Tech Notice. He did a great job of just kind of explaining things. He had a two hour live stream. Um, I watched that and built as I watched the live stream, occasionally, you know, pausing to look at some different things and just seeing the order in which he added things to uh, to the motherboard uh, just was super helpful. Like, do you add the RAM first? Do you add the hard drive first? I just followed his steps and it worked fine. Quick shout out, I've got two courses, Learn to Draw in 60 Days and Intro to Digital Art over at bradsartschool.com. Check those out if you're just jumping into digital art or wanting to learn more about drawing. Back to the video. Number four, all the information is in the manuals. Even if you don't see it the first, second, or third time, it's in there. But the key is, is that each manual for each part may hold a different piece of information that you need to put this all together. Someone online described this to me as like adult Legos. That's a really good description. The booklet I found most useful for mine was the motherboard booklet. I went to the page with the diagram of the motherboard with all of the little like circles as far as like, hey, this is where you plug in the CPU power source. This is where the fan power source goes in. That was my holy grail. Like I, I flattened out the book and it was on that page the entire time. This also goes back to the Google thing because most of those things that were like labeled on there, I did not understand what those labels meant. So when I saw it, I was like 
Googling a lot of labels. Some of the labels didn't apply to me. Some of them did. Number five, the power source was a riddle wrapped in a mystery. This was by far the most confusing part. As I was kind of plugging along on this, everything was going smoothly. Like, oh, I know where the processor goes. I, I know where the storage goes. I know where the RAM goes. I knew where the power supply went, but it comes with a lot of cables, more cables than you will ever, ever need. Also figuring out how much voltage your motherboard needs can be a little bit confusing. The power source that I used here is probably a little bit overkill, has way more ports than I would ever need, but I used some of them, I used half of them. What really threw me were the shapes of these cords. The main connector with most of the pins, that was really, really easy to figure out. Like there's only one place for that to go. There's a place on the top of my motherboard where the power for the CPU goes. And there was an eight pin connector there and another four pin connector next to it. Now for my CPU and what I'm doing here, I don't need to draw that much power. I only needed the eight pin connector. And this was another thing that threw me. I didn't have an eight pin connector in the box. Well, I didn't think I did. I actually do, I had several. It was a six pin in a two pin and you have to use them together to plug into the eight pin because they were separated it just threw me for a loop this was another one of those things that's not labeled anywhere because everybody's just supposed to know it but google told me another thing that helped me along is my particular power source had everything labeled for me so the things that went into the power source were labeled psu and the other side of those cables were labeled like cpu or something like that the pci cords got plugged into the graphics card I even ended up using some of the SATA cords, I don't know if I'm using the right term there to describe them, to plug in my fans because my fans needed like that kind of connection. So I had to plug that into my power source as well. So most of those cords are there for a reason. You're not going to need most of them. So don't feel bad at all if there are many left over when you're done. Number six, if there's an error on your boot screen, don't ignore it, you fool. Calling myself a fool here, not you. I only made one mistake in this whole thing and that was connecting my cooler. My cooler ended up coming with, I think there were four cables. There were two for the fans because there were two fans on top that were like pushing out the air and cooling the liquid as it kind of flows through all the pipes. There's another cord to power the pipe motor to kind of push the liquid around. And there was a third cord for the fancy screen that I wanted to get with this thing. The LED screen I got right. Uh, one of the fan cords I got right, but uh, the pump cord I ended up plugging into one of the fan sockets and the other fan went into the pump cord socket. So it was just a little bit confused. And that showed up when when I booted up the system, it wasn't able to find all the CPU fans properly. So what ended up happening is that cooler just like blew at high speed the entire time. Since I've never built a PC or even used a PC like this, I didn't know how quiet or how loud it was supposed to be. So I assumed the fans running at full speed was a normal thing for a little while. It is not, it is way quieter than I expected it to be. But at any rate, if you get an error on the boot screen, back to Google with you. Number seven, make sure you have a Windows computer available to you before you build a Windows computer. That may be a little bit confusing for some people. Once you get all the parts in your PC and you boot it up for the first screen, it's gonna take you to the brute screen and it's going to show you basically the firmware that's running on your computer. And from there, you're gonna to have to install Windows. To do that, you're gonna need Windows on like, I used a USB stick basically plugged into the computer in order to like run Windows installer right from there from the boot screen. I'm using the wrong term here. I should probably say BIOS. But in order to make that USB stick, I needed a Windows computer already to plug it into and kind of run everything off it. I'm primarily Mac, but I do have some Windows computers lying around. So that wasn't too much of a problem for me, but it might be for you if you don't have one around. You might have to borrow somebody, use a friend's, that sort of thing. So those are my seven tips for noobs. If you've built a PC recently, I wanna know what your experience is like down below in the comments. What tips do you have? Things that you like bumped into when you were building for the first time that you wanna share with other people? Let me know. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Peace.